time to introduce you to our next inductees into the Hall of Fame. And once again, thanks to our sponsor Paddy Power for that, uh, the Harry Boland Hall of Fame. We've already seen some St. Pat's legends this evening and we're going to be introduced to a couple more this evening. Uh, first of all though, a gentleman who isn't here, because the lucky sod is in Australia, just thinking about the summer about to arrive. It's Paddy Dillon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Paul O'Malley will come up to uh, receive Paddy's award and just to tell you a little bit about Paddy, those of you who don't know, a dynamic centre forward signed from Drada at the start of the 86-87 season. A prolific goal scorer, a very difficult opponent, his energy and goals were a major contributing factor in the development of the side which finished runners-up in the league championship of 87-88 and in Paddy Dillon older Saints supporters recognised the skills of the legendary Shea Gibbons. Speed, skill on the ground and in the air and an uncanny consistency in scoring. His decision to emigrate to Australia before the start of the 88-89 season was met with great regret by Saints supporters who saw Paddy as a great prospect for the future success of the team. And although he's only out, he only played with the club for two seasons, he's remembered with great admiration. Paul, if you uh, would come up to accept that. Paul Malley on behalf of the great Paddy Dillon. And thanks indeed once again to Paul and to Alan McDonald for their work in organising the Harry Boland Hall of Fame sponsored by Paddy Power. Now to two gentlemen who are in the room. Uh, will you put your hands together for Mark Ennis and Johnny Mack. There's some photos, aren't there? I'll tell you a bit about Mark first. Signed from Shelburne by Brian Kerr at the start of 87-88. Mark, the son of a former St. Pat's player, Noel Ennis, of course, became an integral part of the team, which won the championship in 1990. Having been signed to play on the right wing, Mark took over the centre-forward spot when Paddy Dillon left for Australia, and he developed very quickly into the leading and most consistent goal scorer in the countries. His pace and goal scoring ability were extraordinary. In 1990, he scored over 30 goals. And it was fitting that such an icon of St. Pat's should have scored the first goal in the first competitive game in the refurbished Richmond Park. That was against Shells on the 5th of December in 1993. His talent is forever ingrained in the memory of those privileged to have seen him play. Let's see him again. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mark Ennis. It's not great, is it? I think we might have been Well, it's important that you wear your heart in your sleeve. Very much so, very much so, yeah. It's, it's important that you do that. Now, what do you remember of those great past days? Uh, the team, basically, uh, we were just, it was one of those teams where everybody was sort of together. Uh, we all done what we had to do at the end of the day. Defensively, we were strong. Going forward, we were always there or thereabouts, and we were lucky enough that we were we were getting goals when we had to get goals. Well, you were getting goals. What was, what was the, your, your best attribute as a scorer? Uh, just, just being lucky around the box. I think John Lawless had a lot to do with it, in all fairness to him. He done all the donkey work. I was lucky enough to be on the end of most of the stuff that, that he created, you know? Well done, Mark. Just stay there for a minute because uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about Johnny Mack. Like, Johnny Mack, well known to everyone in the room, I guess. He, um, it was formerly with Belvedere Boys, of course, home farm and Shamrock Rovers, one of Brian Kerr's first signing when he joined Pats from Drada at the start of 87-88. A central figure in the Saints' unexpected surge as championship contenders in that season when they finished second and was well established as one of the league's outstanding defenders in the league winning side of 1990. He captained the side which won the league and finished runner up in the FAI Cup in 1996. Of course, club manager from May 2004 until the end of the 2008 season. And he built a team which achieved FAI Cup runners up in 2006, league runners up in 2007 and 2008, and as well as that, an unprecedented third qualifying place in the UEFA Cup 2008. Will you put your hands together, please, for Johnny McDonald?
That's a feeling to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. That means you're getting old. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. And, you know, just to reiterate what Hendo said earlier, uh, it's fantastic to see so many faces. I haven't seen a lot of fellas in a long time, and uh, it's great to see them around. Now, we talk about Paddy Dillon as well, of course. What do you remember of Paddy? He's the bravest centre forward I've ever seen. Ball going into the box, there'll be sparks flying, there'll be fellas all over the place, and you say, well done, Paddy, great goal. He didn't even know he scored, but he was the bravest man I've ever seen. Keepers were afraid of the life of him. And as I say, Hendo could, you know, tell you that. The, the club, the place in Chicor, the, the, the history, there's something very special about the Saints. Yeah, they're, they're good people, you know, really good people. Supporters are great, you know, honest in their opinion of how you do. They tell you out straight if you're good or bad or indifferent. But they're good, and uh, the good thing out there is the community, and it's important that the club is still there. All them years later, you know, it's important that the, the ground is still there, the team is still playing in Ninja Core. It's very, very important for the community up there. What was your highlight as, as manager? Uh, I suppose, you know, you could say highlights, you know, disappointments, I would say, because, you know, finishing second twice in two years in a row, and, you know, obviously, the, FAI Cup final was disappointing as well, but highlights is to be the manager. I have to say over a few years, proud to be the manager. Well, you know I'm going to have to ask you, would you like to be the manager again? You have to talk to the agent. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the progress, by the way? You had some head in here. That's, you know, that's not me hurting heading the ball, the lads wouldn't head the ball, I used to be one of the headed. Well done to you, Johnny Mack, to you, Mark Ennis, and to Paddy Dillon as well. Ladies and gentlemen, give him a big round of applause.